Okay, so now we have a picture of objects and how those objects are connected together. And this is going to turn into the table structure that we're going to use. And so now we're going to take how to take those relationships, those little arrows, and represent them in a database, right? We still need to keep track of who the artist is, what the genre is. We have to keep track of all these things, but now we've separated them out and we need to model those connections, right? We need to model those connections. If you are taking, we're taking a really super sophisticated database class, we talk at this point about the different forms of database normalization in first normal form and second normal form and third normal form and which one's better and why you do this and what it really means. That's great. That's some of the wonderful mathematics that underlies the power of what we're going to play with. But basically what we're going to show you is a light version of third normal form following pretty much one basic rule and that is always, I mean, that's good. The, the rule is never replicate a string. It's the Charles Severance example. You can have a learning management system with hundreds of tables and billions of records, but the word Charles Severance, as it refers to a particular user, should only appear one place. And what we do is we use numbers to act as proxies for those strings. Anywhere we want to put, this belongs to Charles Severance, this comment came from Charles Severance, Charles Severance ends up with a number, 12, and then we put 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, instead of Charles Severance, Charles Severance, Charles Severance. And so we don't replicate string data. We reference the data, we point at it, and we use integer numbers for this. Um, integers are very, they're stored very efficiently, they're sorted very efficiently, they're accessed very efficiently, and so we have numbers that represent these little arrows. And what we do to, to take Charles Severance is we add a little key to it. We call it the Charles Severance's key, so be a little number field. So um, we'll see how this all works, okay? And so we create these places that have the, uh, a user's name, Charles Severance, then a user key, and then everywhere else we have the user key and we connect back to the user key. So if we were to model the relationship between artist and album in our little database here, um, we would have to add to the artist table a key. Right? We'll call this artist underscore ID just by convention. I have my, my table names have capital letters in them, capital artist. My columns are all lowercase, and artist underscore ID is the key in the artist table that is magically ACDC everywhere in this system. Even if we had hundreds of tables, we will use the number uh, 2 to represent ACDC. So when we're in a table, say like album, where we want to say, oh, who does this album belong to? And we want to say, I would like, this album belongs to artist ID 2. So that's effectively the proxy for ACDC all over this database. And you can think of this arrow as having a direction. So artist ID points to a row in a different table, and that row is number 2. And the same is true for Led Zeppelin, points to a row in this other, other table. So these are those arrows that we drew before. Now, this album also itself is, has rows. And we put a key here as well. And so each album has a number. And so anywhere we want to reference who made who, we don't put the string who made who, we put the number one. Same for Led Zeppelin IV, we put the number two. So the idea is, is we can replicate these numbers very efficiently, put them all over the place, replicate them as many times as we want, because numbers are short, uh, uh, highly compressible, uh, fast, all, all kinds of good things about numbers, okay? Now, I'm calling these things keys, and it turns out that we have some terminology about keys, and you just have to learn this, okay? Have to learn this. There are three general kinds of keys that we deal with, okay? The first kind of key is what's called a primary key, and that's the key we add to the table to generate this little number. So we call that the primary key of the entire row. The foreign key is the key that points to something, right? It point, it's a, one of these pointer keys. We'll see this in a second. The logical key is the key that the world would look this up, maybe the person's email, for example. So the outside world and the inside world. The primary key is generally just a number that's used inside the database from one table to the other table, okay? But the outside world knows who this user is, and this user might be, you know, c7umish.edu, yada, yada. Okay, so the logical key is often a string that might be typed into a form on a web form. <clears throat> the relationships 
need to be done by uh, relationships need to be done using primary keys. Never use the logical key, which is a string, as your primary key. And logical keys, including people's e email names, change. And so if you have that primary key all spread out around your database and you got to change all the primary keys, it's terrible. So things like email may not change, but people do change jobs. They go to new places and their email changes. And if you have a million records, you want to change even that email one place. Now a foreign key is the way we model these arrows. And a foreign key kind of has a start and an end. And so if album belongs to artist, we have to add a column to the album table called artist ID. So if there's a column in album ID called album ID in the album table, that's its primary key. Artist ID has a primary key in artist. But if we're going to have artist ID in the album table, that generally indicates it's a foreign key. It's a key in another table, right? It's a key in the artist table. So if it doesn't match album, that means it's a key. Now, you can name these things any way you want. You could call this X and you could call this Y and A, B, C. You can name anything you want and you can call your, you know, um, W and Q, right? You could name these crazy names. I don't name them crazy names because if you name your variables, your columns and your tables in a crazy non-disciplined way, then your head will explode. So please don't have your head explode. So I have a convention here that's kind of borrowed from Ruby on Rails mostly. The only part where Ruby on Rails and I differ is I don't, they call this field ID with no, without the table name. I like to put the table name there. And convention is style. So there's not like a perfect convention. I disagree a little bit with Ruby on Rails there. Um, this is not a Ruby on Rails class. Um, and so this is how I do primary keys. Ruby on Rails, I, I borrowed this convention from Ruby on Rails, but I don't like the primary key of ID on Ruby on Rails, but other things choose it as well. So now we have this concept of primary key, logical key, and foreign key. And so what we want to do is we want to take our picture and we want to turn it into tables. So we have to add some bookkeeping columns, some columns that are there just for the purpose of bookkeeping. Okay, And we have to model these arrows, which means we've got to put a few extra things here and a few extra things here. So we're going to, you know, we're going to have to put something in this table extra to model this end of it. We have to put a primary key in every table so that we have something to point to. And then we're going to have another thing in here that points to here. And then we'll have another column in here that points to there. And so we need to add bookkeeping columns. They're not the data. The data is like rating, length, count, title of the album, etc., 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 title of the track. That's the actual data. These keys that we're going to add to these things are just to model the relationships between them. Okay? So if we just take a look at the track belonging to the album, so we have, you know, the track, its title, its rating, its length, and its count, and those are just the data items. And so those things track becomes the name of the table, and then title, rating, and length, and count sort of become the data items right here. And we're going to mark title as the logical key. Now, it's still a string, and we're just saying, look, we might be looking these rows up by title, so be ready. So, we're, so it's, not, it's still a string. It's nothing particular special. Then what we do is we add, for bookkeeping, a primary key to the track and to the album, just so we have a little handle to grab tracks as well. We don't have anything pointing to tracks, but in our application, eventually, we might be more complex and have something pointing at tracks. So we put these little primary keys in just almost automatically. And then we have a foreign key because we've got to model this relationship. So we put a, put a column in here, and that column ends up being called album ID because it's telling us this is pointing to a row in the album table. And so when my naming convention that column is named album ID. And so you can see this is a kind of mechanical process where you've got the stuff you want to talk about and then you put them in and then you add a primary key to each of the tables and then you add necessary foreign key columns as necessary at the starting end of these arrows. Okay? So if we just apply this process over and over and over, we end up with four tables that are, are four objects. They all have primary keys on them. They all have logical keys. Not every table will have a logical key, but for now we've got logical keys for all the tables. And then for each of the arrows, we've got uh, starting points and ending points.
So we have the track that it points to both a genre and an album, and then the album points to an artist. So you see it's kind of a very mechanical translation from the picture of logical relationships between the objects that our application is working with and the physical representation, the way we're going to put it in the database, because we have to model these arrows. Okay? Because the database doesn't have the arrows. We just have to say there's a column, and that's our way of keeping track of the arrows.